In this problem, I need to rewrite this expression here as one single logarithm. So what I've written down here are our, some of our properties of logarithms. And I've got the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. What we're going to be doing, since we're going to be combining into a single log, we're going to be going in this direction. So I want to use the product rule and the quotient rule and the power rule. So it's very important to note when you're using the product rule and the quotient rule, the, the coefficients in front of the logarithms have to be a 1, both of them are 1 here, or a 1 and a negative 1. I cannot combine them using either of these properties until that is true. And to make that true, I might have to use my power rule. So let's have a look at our problem. I've rewritten it over here. Is the coefficient of each of the logs a 1 or a negative 1? No. So what I'm going to have to do is use my power rule. And the power rule says that if I have a number times a logarithm, what I'm allowed to do with that number that's multiplied in front of the log is bring it up as an exponent, as you can see by this here. So that's what I'm going to have to do with this one half here. I'm going to have to bring it up as an exponent on the x. I'm going to have to bring the 5 up as an exponent on the y and the 4 up as an exponent on the x. I'm going to leave the negative there. I just need to move the 4. Okay, so how am I going to rewrite this? It's going to be log to the base a of x to the 1 half power. Plus, remember the 5 is going up as an exponent, log to the base a of y to the 5th, minus log to the base a of x raised to the fourth power. So now, do I have a 1 in front of this log? Yes. A 1 in front of this log and a negative 1 in front of that log. So now I'm ready to use my product rule and quotient rule. So looking at my first two terms, they both have a plus 1 in front of them. So now I can use the product rule. And so now I'm going to combine them. And what do I do to the two arguments? It says I must multiply them. So this is going to give me log to the base a of x to the 1 half multiplied by y to the fifth. It's very important when you go in this direction, your m and n, your two arguments, must be multiplied. Do not add these, they're multiplied. Minus log to the base a of x to the fourth. So now we have a plus 1 in front of this one, a minus 1. So this is where we're going to use the quotient rule. The log that is positive, the m, goes in the numerator. The log that is negative, the argument, goes in the denominator. So this is going to give me log to the base a of x to the 1 half times y to the fifth, all divided by my x to the fourth. Since this log here, the, x, the log to base a of x to the fourth was negative. That means it goes in the denominator. The only thing we have to do is can we simplify anything in here? Yes, I have two x's, and so I have x to the half divided by x to the fourth. When you divide, you subtract exponents. More of them are in the denominator, so I want to have 4 minus 1 half. So let's quickly work on that. How do I do 4 minus 1 half? Well, 4... I'm going to have to multiply by 2 over 2 to get my common denominator. So I'm going to get 8 halves minus 1 half, which is 7 halves. 
And remember, the answer is going to be in the denominator. So I'm going to have log to the base A of y to the fifth stays in the numerator. And then I'm going to have x to the seven halves is going to be in the denominator. And now, can I simplify any more? No, because I have different bases, can't combine exponents. So this is my answer. And is it one of the answers up here? Well, I definitely have log to the base A of a quotient, which kind of rules out A, C, and D. And is it the answer B? Log to the base A of Y to the fifth over X to the seven halves. Is that what I got? Yes. So my answer is B.